Hello, in this video I want to give a brief introduction into the decorator pattern, just to refresh your memory in case you forgot everything. We remember the decorator pattern is used when you want to be able to extend existing code without changing it. It's important. This is my diagram for that. My example is a text. We have a usual text that should be rendered and we decide later in the year that we maybe want to make it blink or underline. And we know that we want to have extensions to that text class, but we don't want to put all that stuff here. We don't want how to have a blink class and, and ask, should it blink? Yes, no, then make it blink or should it be underlined? Yes, no, we don't want that. So what we do is we create an interface that has the same method, declares the same method. And then we have an abstract class over here that defines the method here from the interface. But let's start at the beginning. This is how it works. You make a new, I mean, of course, not from the abstract class, but in the end, you make a new object and you add an iText object to this. So it could be this object itself, the original text or some of these classes or objects. And you will save whatever you get here into your text variable. And whenever render is called, then the first thing that happens is text.render will be called. So if this was, um, if there was an object like this of this class here in this variable, then you first will render this one, and then you will call the added render function, which is not implemented in the abstract class. It's implemented in the child classes, which brings us to the child classes. Pretty easy. So you just need to add your own functionality here within the added render function. Or if you want to make it underlined, you call and render underline inside the added render function. Okay, that's basically it for the decorator pattern. But now I want to go into just a little bit of detail. First thing is, this is private. This text should be an arrow. This is private. This is private because we don't want these classes to mess with this reference or pointer or whatever. Second, we have a final over here. I stole this from Java. We want to make sure that this class is never being overwritten. Uh, the, sorry, that this function is never being overwritten. Why? Because if one of these classes can overwrite these fun this function, then our existing code could be changed that way. Third point, why don't we swap these two? With this not changeable function, this is carved in stone. Always call the render first and then call, it, or call the additional render. This is to make sure that whatever worked prior to the change still works. So you first you implement the text class and that works fine for like one or two years and then you want to add an underline functionality and you do all that stuff and you do it in this way but it doesn't get underlined it should be underlined but it doesn't so something is wrong even if it's not underlined still the text gets rendered it's not like the text is not viewable on the screen it's still there it's just not underlined so you are pretty sure that whatever you whatever changes you make if something is working is something is not working after the changes, it's because of your change. So you have to search the bug in here and not in here and not in here because everything until this point worked fine. So if something is going to be wrong, then it's here. So it's here in your new functionality. That's the reason order for this order. I was not sure if I recorded all that stuff. Okay, that's it. Basically video is finished. I want to give a bad example at the end. Um, you see almost the same stuff. The only difference is that we have a render call in here and in here. Why is this bad? Because you might forget to call the render function here and then nothing is working after you change. And this is what you really don't want to have. And if you have a lot of functions here and you always have to write text render, this is really not what you want to do if you can actually do it here. So first point is it helps you to not write, not, not repeat yourself. And second, it helps you to reduce errors because you might've forgotten it. And the last, the last point, let's switch back to here. Um, I made this an abstract function, so an open recursion. I don't see any problem to implement this as just an empty thing. And that being said, thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, if you have anything like, oh, that's wrong, that's not good, then let me know in the comments. And make sure to read the video description, please. In case of any updates, I update the video description. Okay, finished.